we tend to find that there's a point at which the, the only way to really move the margin is if you dramatically increase the revenues because you're going to have some fixed cost. For most everything that has a fee associated with it, um, you've got, you know, if you suddenly have 300,000 visitors instead of 200,000 visitors, your staffing costs are going to go up. If you do 500 birthday parties instead of 400 birthday parties, your staffing costs are going to go up. And so it becomes more of a marketing activity and a communications activity if you're trying to move something up further on the margin side of this. So to recap the steps that we go through with this, we really try to define the operational areas that we want to evaluate. And so as we bring new programs or new initiatives on board, we're constantly looking at what else we need to evaluate. The finance staff produces the information regarding expenses and revenues. Usually we all know the revenues because our staff looks at financial statements on a monthly basis. We analyze the mission results. Then together we brainstorm the strategies for increasing mission and margin. And that really begins to frame a work plan either for the remainder of a year or for a whole year. We, like the other museums up here this morning, we have a strategic plan, of course. That strategic plan has key success objectives that are developed for every year. And those key success objectives drive our budget development. And so we're doing this mission and margin piece. Actually, we've just done it. Um, we're doing it in the first quarter of the calendar year, which is really the third quarter of our business year. Then we develop benchmarks and timelines for implementation and for change. If we're revising a pricing structure, if we're expanding summer camps from half-day camps to full-day camps, all of those things get a timeline associated with them. And then we have continue to evaluate and we say, how are we doing? Um, so that it's not the board doing this work and it's not a board-led activity. This is a staff-led activity. The board's always amazed that, gosh, you do this and you force yourself to have this, this discipline in the process, and we do. And I think it's helped us to be a healthier organization and to continue to look for areas where we can grow um, our budget and our capacity to innovate and to offer um, programs and services that meet the needs of our community. And so at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Van. He's got some words of wisdom for you as well, and then we'll open it up for questions. Just going to take a minute to to share a couple of tools. They, these probably will seem like uh, relatively uh, no-brainer kind of things, but we've used these a lot. First of all, is project setup. Whenever we take on a project, we run through this exercise, and this happens on the senior management level. It happens on the department level, on the program level, et cetera, et cetera. And again, this is pretty easy, but but it might be useful for you. Uh, first of all, you state what the project is about. You know, pretty pretty simple idea. Uh, are we going to do birthday parties, uh, for example? And then benefits. What are the possible benefits? You write down all the different possible benefits that you could um, uh, that could derive from birthday parties. Um, and then you write uh, the verbs, which are facts, unwritten rules, beliefs. Does anybody know what an unwritten rule is? Unwritten rule is. Something like, um, we can't do birthday parties because uh, the museum down the street does birthday parties or something like that. Facts, unwritten rules, beliefs. It just gives you a sense of what the barriers and obstacles and opportunities might be by going through those kinds of, of uh, exercises. And then you're out the criteria for success. So you're thinking about the benefits, you're thinking about the verbs, as we call it. And then you're saying, well, what, what would be the criteria for success? What would be a successful birthday party? Would it be educational in nature? Would it have a good margin? Um, uh, would it, would, it, uh, would the, the kids go on and spread um, uh, good information about your organization by word of mouth, et cetera, et cetera? Will the parents tell other parents? 
And then you just write a simple project statement and say, if we had a successful birthday party program, it would look like this. And that, that might just be one short paragraph. And this frames our way of thinking about how we would have a successful project. In, in a way, it's sort of anticipatory of what the mission margin exercise would be about as an evaluation tool. And then, uh-oh, I'm being spy swept. Click on the X. Okay, I can do that. Yes, I don't want that. Ooh. Do what? Minimize. This. Okay. All right, and this is what we call the decision matrix. Ooh. Backwards. This is what we call the decision matrix. This has been an extremely valuable tool for us um, to um, just make it real clear who's got the ball uh, so that it doesn't become, uh, so the CEO, for example, doesn't become the default decision maker so that the, the staff doesn't interfere with each other in terms of moving forward on, on decisions and, and projects. So we call it racing, and it starts with responsible. Who is responsible for the project? Ideally, that would be one person would be responsible for the project. And they are responsible for doing whatever it is that we want to get done. And so if the project would be to implement, create and implement a birthday party program, that would be one person. Again, ideally one person. Who approves? And that may or may not be the CEO. It might be a, a group of colleagues. Uh, it might be a, a stakeholder group, depending on the nature of the project but somebody has to approve it. And it could be the person that's also responsible for the project, could also be the person that approves the project. Who is consulted? This is, um, this is important. This is the idea of making sure that everybody is at the table uh, in one way or another as you move uh, through the process of creating the project or planning the project. And when we say consulted, this is very different from the next one, which is informed. Consulted means that you are truly having a dialogue with this person about the project in such a way that you're actually sharing meaningful ideas about about what it might be. So if you're consulting with the director of marketing uh, and visitor services, such as we have in our organization, uh, you're consulting with them for their expertise related to how these two things work together, et cetera, et cetera. You can uh, also consult with a group, um, uh, but you shouldn't consult, you shouldn't confuse a group consultation with and somebody being in that group and wearing that group hat from the hat that they wear as in, in their own position. So, for example, oftentimes a project, uh, we will consult with our senior management, which we call our deputy director team, um, and we'll consult with them as a group, but we might consult with the deputy director for advancement or development uh, in a very specific way about the project, which is the nature of that consultation is different. And then finally, who must be informed? And that's, that is more of a matter of information. It's not necessarily seeking feedback or consultation. It's really just let's make sure everybody knows about this. So if you're going to change the, the, the policy of how you deal with the um, you know, uh, notification of, uh, of a snow emergency, uh, we've changed our policy about 10 times in the past uh, couple of years because it just seems like every time we think we've got just exactly the right policy, a new variable comes in, which kind of gets us back to the fact that it's really going to be always a matter of a judgment call along the way. We've tried to eliminate that, and it just never fails. We just can't seem to do it. Um, and then finally, uh, um, who has no involvement? And this is something that you often don't specify, but sometimes it's, it's important to think, well, really, who just doesn't need to know about this at all, so we don't have to worry about that. That's relatively rare. So that's just, again, a couple of tools, um, and I'm done, and now we'll uh, answer your questions. Um, Lisa is going to share one other um, thing that we want to make sure you're aware of, and then we'll open it up for questions. <clears throat> 